It's interesting to note, I'm going to talk about spruce first, that uh, it doesn't come from a lumber store. In fact, it comes straight from the forest. And we buy logs that we find in windfalls of the forest. Sometimes we can buy logs um, that are uh, available in a logging yard where there's some stuff to select through. But I want to show you some footage now of, of the, real, uh, the real story of where spruce comes from. And then when we get back to, back to the stage here, I'm going to kind of take you through some step-by-step -step processes of how that happens. How high would you say we're going to climb this mountain? Uh, 500 feet. 500 feet up. We got three logs on the mountain, right? Right. Taken, have all been blown down in the wind. Here's, here's the end of the tree. You can see the stump sitting here. Here's Steve. How old is this one, Bill? We got the end of it right here. Let's take a look at it. 300 years old. 1690 this tree was born. Yep. It was uh, 190 feet tall. And it blew down November 25th, 89. It was a big windstorm. They said it was 100 mile an hour winds. Originated where, where our camp is, over that saddle above us. And because that area up there had been clear cut, it, it allowed the wind to build up a heck of a big, powerful blow. Went through here. And it blew down in, in this area that's been left uncut between that clear cut and the one just on the other side of it. Uh, we figured it blew down about 80 trees. Most of them were hemlocks, but there were five big spruces up here, uh -huh. 300 to 350 years old. This is a real nice stand of spruce. They're all straight, uh, pretty defect free. These, this is a real vigorous tree, 300 years, 350 premium. So out of this tree, we got we split out. You can see the piles of blocks. These are all piled up, roughly a quarter of a cord in each pile. A helicopter will drop a big hook down a couple hundred feet. We'll hook onto one of these eyes right here in this, in, in this choker. You drop the hook down, you ground it on the ground so you don't have any static charge. Hook it, you get out of the way, he lifts it up, out to the pit. Okay, first thing you do is look for obvious knots, They're visible outside the bark, nothing. Mark off the sap. Split off. There's a color change at the sap, right? Yeah, and, and in blowdowns it's buggy and it's never sound for guitar wood. There you go. Note the knots. I this see wasn't that discernible knot. before. And you can see how the fibers bend around it, even out to here. Right. Even out to there. So that piece is junk. Can't even make braces out of it because it's too short when it's trimmed. So then you look all along for other little knot indicators. And really, when you're doing this, you have a graded you know, this is what guys in the sawmill are trying to do too, is visualize the inside of the log. And when you do it this way, you have more information than they ever do. It's another bad place there. Not. The fro makes a split that's very controlled. So let's look at this piece here. This may be a tailor in here if there are no knots. And now I'll split off the inside before I subdivide it to further check it. Split off the inside so you can look for knots that you can't see from the outside. Right, so you can always subdivide to get the biggest piece possible of clear. Peer down the hole and see that there's a knot right here. Like there's a branch coming straight through there, yeah. right? Branch that tied off at 
year 150 in this tree's life. And so, I'll subdivide this on the edge of that knot. A little crowded there? Yeah, I wanted to be working. Did you make the platform up there? Oh, you did. Oh, okay. And I'll subdivide this on this edge of the knot. There's two of them. That'll get me started. You see the effect of the knot still there? So, maybe a piece of bracewood off this edge and then good wood. This side's quite clean, a little bit of dark line there. So that's, that's a tailor, this is scrap, that's a, something else.